Number 57. Find the total capacitance of the combination of capacitors in figure 19.32. So here's figure 19.32. Okay, so we got to find the total capacitance, or aka the equivalent capacitance we probably could call it. So the whole goal of a problem like this is we have to somehow get this, you know, circuit more or less. You can think about it as a circuit. Actually, when you see circuits in the next chapter, you're going to think about it, uh, compressing those circuits, finding equivalent resistance and whatnot, basically exactly the same way. So what you need to do is we have to try to get this down into a single capacitor, this, this whole system. Now, there's three separate capacitors to it, okay? So my goal is to try to, you know, get this to be a single capacitance value. So the way we look through it is we got to think through parallel and series capacitors. So pretend you have a certain, just think about it as a certain charge flow. Pretend you have certain charge flowing, you know, from this point at the, you know, where I started the star and just pretend it's going to flow all the way down to the end. Okay. And here's going to be the, the end then. Okay. The whole goal now, let me just erase all this. The whole goal, let me, why did I put a star? Let me say start. The whole goal is to take elements that are in similar arrangement to one another and be able to combine them. So what I'm saying is, if I notice these two capacitors right here, the 10 microfarad and the 2.5 microfarad, they are in what is called parallel arrangement. Why are they in parallel arrangement? Well, if you notice, they're side by side one another. Right? We can think about charge flowing through they're flowing parallel to one another. Okay, that's how I kind of know, right? So in order to combine this now into an equivalent capacitance, meaning in order to combine these two parallel elements into a single capacitance ele uh, element, I need to know how to quote unquote add these two together. So the way we add them together for parallel capacitors, and you got to keep this in mind that it'll be a little, it'll be different when you get to the uh, um, circuit chapter. Okay, not for capacitors, that is, but for resistance. So just keep that in mind. So when you have capacitors in parallel, you're simply going to take the ones that are in parallel, take the first capacitance value, add it to the second, add it to the third, add it to the fourth, you know, however many capacitors you have there in parallel. Now you might be saying, well, Andrew, you know, what about this one? Why aren't you taking that into account? Well, this one is, you'll see, it's actually going to be in series. Okay, this one is in series to these two parallel uh, uh, capacitors. But what I need to do is I do not like to look at this and try to sum all these up together. I look at little parts first, tackle the little pieces first, and if you keep tackling the little pieces over and over again, you realize you'll accomplish something great. See? Who would have guessed? Who would have guessed there'd be some life advice in this video? I didn't. I definitely didn't. So, uh, in any case, all I need to do now so to figure out the total capacitance of a, of a parallel arrangement, I simply have to add them together. So I take, and by the way, you do, not, you do not need this in farad. You can do this all in microfarad or millifarad or picofarad or whatever the, whatever the heck you want to do. You got to make sure, though, that they're equivalent. All right? You can't be adding microfarad to millifarad. So just be careful. All the units are the same, so we're fine. So it's 10 micro plus then 2.5 micro. And that will get me now. 12.5 microfarads, okay? So this whole arrangement here is basically akin to a single capacitance that would have this value, 12.5 microfarad. So what I'm now going to do is I'm just going to move this out of the way first, actually. Well, that's going to probably take that. Um, yeah, I'm going to leave it. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to draw a new drawing. So what I'm going to do basically is combine these two now into a single capacitance, into a single capacitor, I should say. So here, this new thing that I just drew is going to now represent 12.5 microfarads, okay? I just took these two and I now combined it into one. Then I realized that as I continue on down, both of these basically came and then flowed through this capacitor, right? So in other words, wouldn't that be similar to saying if I combine these two now into one single capacitor here, the 12.5, I would just then continue on straight down and get to the 0.3. Sure, right, wouldn't it? So that's what I'm going to do up here. Just continue it on straight down. 
Here's now my point 0.3. Point 0.3 microfarads. And then again, this was the end, and this was the start. Now I have to take a step back and realize what I got here. I have then two now capacitors that are in what arrangement? These, this is known as series. So anytime you have, again, you can think about it as charge. Anytime you have like flow, okay, between two capacitors, it would also be the same as if you were dealing with resistors in the next chapter. Anytime it looks like things are flowing through both of them simultaneously, there's no, well, not simultaneously, but one after the other flows through this one first, then it flows through the second one. Whenever you have that arrangement, there's no branching of any sort. That's known as a series arrangement. Okay. So now how do I find then the total capacitance of a series arrangement? Well, now it just turns out to be a slightly different formula. This says that this is now the formula. The reciprocal of the basically capacitance in series is going to be equal to 1 over the first capacitance plus 1 over the second capacitance plus 1 over the third plus 1 over the fourth, right, plus dot, 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 dot. So however many got. So how many capacitors are here? There's two. So all you got to do is this. Watch 1 over the... Uh, series capacitance is going to be equal to 1 over 12.5 microfarads plus then 1 over 0 0.3 microfarads. So let's add those together. Okay, so we're going to have, I'm going to do the math on the upper right hand side. So 1 over the series capacitance will then equal, take out the calculator, 1 divided by 12.5 plus 1 divided by 0.3. And we get a value of 3.41. Right, three repeating, blah, blah, blah. Now this is not the answer. This is the reciprocal of the answer. So in order to solve for the series capacitance, all you gotta do is do a cross multiplication. Bring this out of the denominator, up into the numerator on the right, bring this value in the numerator on the right, down into the denominator on the left, and voila. Now you can plug this into the calculator. So just take the reciprocal of it. And we're gonna get a value of then 0.293. 0.293, and that's in terms of microfarads. Okay, so now this is then, and now this basically, so this is it in series, but if you notice now, this would be then the final, final answer. The reason being is because now I would draw my new capacitance, um, you know, picture, and it would look just like this with one now capacitor. And it would have a value then of 0.293. Farads. Oh, excuse me, microfarads. So, this whole picture at the start is basically the same thing as a single capacitance of 0.293 microfarads. Cool. Hopefully that made sense. All right. Now all there is to do is just practice. It's it might be still a little unclear at points, but you got to see practice, you got to see problems done, and then you got to do it yourself on this. Okay, you got to be able to identify patterns, essentially. But that's why I'm here. All right, guys, be well. Thank you so very much. I hope this helped. Please remember to subscribe. Check out probably some of the other videos. I'm sure we're going to go through problems similar to this. And um, look forward to helping you with them. Be well.